Hi everybody, I want to show you a clip of Douglas Murray responding to the idea that the Secretary of State for the United States, Anthony Blinken, talking about creating some kind of peace deal with Israel and the Hamas or with, uh, you know, even the Palestinians and that two-state solution is a thing to be talking about right now. Um, because I think this is coming up more and more as our uh, shock and, you know, numbness to October 7th starts to settle in. And we start to go back into fantasy land about the kind of peace that people in the Blinken camp think is somehow possible. So have a look at what the interviewer says to him about what Blinken's been saying and how Douglas responds, because I think what he says is really important. Well, the US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has been in Israel meeting with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and other ministers, more or less urging them to go easier on Gaza. Blinken claims that the civilian death toll is too high and that Israel must stop taking steps that undercut Palestinians' ability to govern themselves effectively, quote-unquote. But, of course, Gaza is governed by Hamas, a terrorist organisation. So when he talks about allowing them to govern effectively, what is he talking about? A two-state solution, as the US wants, would only work without Hamas. And the only way to get rid of Hamas is to wipe them off the face of the planet. Joining me now from Israel is author Douglas Murray. Douglas, a pleasure as always... What is Blinken actually trying to achieve here? Um, good to be with you. It, it's a bit of a mystery in some ways because the claim that he's making that there simply needs to be a greater trust on both sides, as it were, in order to push for a two-state solution and that it's within Israel's grasp to hand the Palestinian peoples in the West Bank and Gaza a sort of reputable social democratic government structure that allows them to thrive economically and socially is a complete fantasy. Everybody can see it's a fantasy, mm. except it's certain people in the international arena who cling on to this very, very outdated model uh, for dear life. Um, there are very few people in Israel across the right or the left of politics who think that a two-state solution is remotely plausible at the moment. I don't think it's remotely plausible. It's worth noting, by the way, that a lot of the people that Hamas attacked on October 7th in the South were peaceniks, people who maybe were more to the left, who were even looking after Arabs living in Gaza and taking them in for work where they could and hospital visits and all the rest of it. And this for for them even they have had a massive wake up call on realizing that there needs to be a total paradigm shift even as i'm saying even the 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 peaceniks possible at the moment i don't know if it ever will be but it looks incredibly unlikely at the moment because as you mentioned in your introduction um hamas well gaza became a kind of state every jew was forcibly withdrawn from the gaza the authorities in Gaza were given everything with the, of the structure that was there, including the economic structure. And for the next 18 years, Hamas were voted in, killed their Palestinian opponents, um, enriched themselves massively, bought Ferraris and luxury apartments for themselves and their children, um, kept the people in some relative poverty because they stole all the aid money and other things that went in and built a tunnel network instead, instead of buildings. Um, but, you know, all of that happened in what could have been a Gazan-Palestinian state. And then after barrage after barrage of rockets over many years, finally we had the events of October the 7th um, last year and three months ago now. And that's what that's what the Israelis got from a Palestinian state in Gaza. And why people like Blinken keep committing to the idea that Gaza could be socially democratically ruled at some point in the near future, if mm. only the Israelis agreed to it, uh, or that there's any similar alternative in the West Bank, I think is for the fairies. By the way, Hamas have majority support, including for what they did on October 7th, even in the West Bank, according to recent polling. Um, the West Bank, if it had an election tomorrow, would elect Hamas. It oh, there we go. He said it. It's the only good reason why Mahmoud Abbas is now into the, something like the 17th year of his four-year term as head of the Palestinian Authority. 
because if he was to have fresh elections, he'd be booted out, would probably be hanged from a lamppost by Hamas like his colleagues in, the, in Gaza. And that would be that. So it's simply a dead song, a dead myth, a dead piece of rhetoric that Blinken and others are now saying. I think Douglas makes a really important point. I think this notion that somehow, you know, there are people in the West who think, oh, we'll just need to get maybe some enlightened thinkers or leaders in charge and, and it will all change and they'll have... The problem with that approach is that the whole notion of the Palestinian state from the start was about, not about nationalism, not about self-determination. It was about destroying a Jewish-run state in a land once controlled by Muslims. It was about a theology that teaches Dar al-Islam that land controlled by Muslims needs to remain controlled by Muslims. And, uh, and certainly Dimmies, who they considered Jews and Christians, shouldn't be running um, those, those kind of countries. And it's such a, a stain on their um, idea of how history is meant to progress by seeing a Jewish state in the region. And so they couldn't care less whether they'd be happy to be, for their land to be considered part of southern Syria which is what a lot of the Palestinian leaders past and present thought, including Zuhair Mohsen, um, Mahmoud al-Zahar, one of the foreign, I think, ex-foreign affairs uh, head of Hamas, even said that we're, we're, this is just about us re-establishing the caliphate. This is about re-establishing mus a Muslim control. And so it's always been that. Even Mahmoud Abbas, who claim is supposedly the moderate, he has a pay for slay system where they'll pay p terrorists that go and terrorize Jews in Israel. If you do it we'll pay, and you get locked up, we'll pay for you and your families. He did his PhD in Russia on the collaboration between the Zionists and the Nazis. That's who the moderate is. So the reason why it's doomed to failure is because the whole cause is based on a lie or a premise of hate, not about self-determination but about getting rid of a Jewish state. Quite frankly, Arabs and Muslims have endless amounts of land and resources. So many states, so much land. They can't allow for just one Jewish state. And this whole notion of creating an Arab-Palestinian state, even though there never was one. Those who do support it, I was told by Sohel Ahmed, who grew up as a, uh, he's a former radical, Islamist and Hamas supporter, former, who said that he was told maybe he could support a Palestinian state, but only as a way of then working towards annihilating the Jewish one. Quite frankly, this notion that Israel should ever give up security control of the West Bank, which is actually Judea and Samaria, historically, biblically, and even according to international law, Jewish land. Um, but even if they, even if it wasn't, the fact is that if they, Israel was to um, release control of that area it would be a direct threat to Israel's very existence it would be signing a suicide warrant because we've already seen as Douglas said what happened when we gave away land for peace we got October 7th why on earth should anything be different when we know what the polling is and the supporters in the in the Palestinian territory and we know what uh, the, the so-called moderates are like Israel simply cannot do it and Netanyahu has said this he said we, we can never ever release security control of Judea and Samaria and I think that the way we get peace is actually through a very simple simple approach instead of working towards a failed idea because it's based on a lie instead how about just telling the truth the truth is this is the Jewish people's land it's our home and we can absolutely have people who aren't Jewish living in this land but if they want to do so they need to live in this land with us in a peaceful way. I think that's, I don't know quite how that's going to look as a political framework, but that has to be the approach moving forward because I'm saying this for anyone who wants peace, that the two-state solution model has proven to fail. And I think, as Douglas said, there's no evidence that a Palestinian state is going to be one that respects freedom, respects um, basic human liberties and rights. So it's, it's so bizarre to me that you have people in, in the West 
who see themselves as liberal or on the left and caring for the oppressed and minorities, the kind of states that they're supporting is one that is so hostile to the very freedoms they purport to support. But there we go. Um, it's just another one of those many, many ironies that we're seeing in this whole conflict. But anyway, good to see Douglas Murray showing some sense. And uh, it's really been great to see how he's become an, a fantastic voice of sense at this very difficult time. I'm Molly Annisfeld and you're watching JTV.